In this video, I will show you three things. How to create an Unreal Engine C++ project, how to create a new C++ class using the Unreal Editor, and how to debug your code. For the debugging, I will show you two different approaches. The second one might be new for you, even if you have already some experience with coding in Unreal Engine. Before we start, let's create a shortcut on the Unreal Editor, so that we don't need to open the Epic Games Launcher every time we want to open our project. Let's open the Epic Games Launcher. On the engine version we want to create the shortcut for, click on the little arrow and select Create Shortcut. This will create a shortcut on a desktop, which we can use to start the Unreal Editor. To create a new project, we want to use one of the pre-installed templates. The template we are looking for can be found in the section Games. We will use the third-person template. Make sure that C++ is selected and the target platform is set to Desktop with maximum quality. I won't select Starter Content or Ray Tracing. Name the project Suricune and click on Create. After the project is created, Visual Studio and Unreal Editor will start automatically. I will display both applications side by side to make it easier for you to follow the single steps. On the left we can see Visual Studio. On the right we can see the Unreal Editor. Before we do anything, let's make sure the right editor settings are applied. First, let's check if the right source code editor is configured. Obviously, Visual Studio launched alongside with the Unreal Editor, but let's use the chance to show you where you can change it. Go to Edit and select Editor Preferences. In the Editor Preferences window, find the section Source Code in the list on the left side. Under Source Code Editor, select Visual Studio if not already selected or select the version that fits your needs. In our case, Visual Studio 2022 is the correct one. We also want to disable live coding for now. For some changes to take effect, Unreal asks us to restart the editor. Anyway, I think it's a good idea to close everything again and to show you how you can open your existing project. So let's close all applications. So now back on the desktop, use the previously created shortcut to open the Unreal editor. Under Recent Projects, we can see our previously created project. Let's open it. To bring up again Visual Studio, let's select Tools and open Visual Studio. In the Solution Explorer on the right side, we can see the project structure. We can see the Unreal Engine 5 project, which contains references to the engine classes, and our project, which already contains some files. For now, let's take notice of the two files suricunecharacter.h and suricunecharacter.cpp. Ok, let's find out how to create a custom class in Unreal Engine. Along our journey in the next tutorials to come, we will create custom classes from time to time. For this tutorial, I will keep it short and simple and concentrate only on the tool side of how to create custom classes. I won't explain object-oriented programming in all of its details here. We have two options to create a new C++ class. We can use the menu under Tools and select New C++ Class, or we can bring up a content browser by clicking on this button or by pressing Ctrl and Spacebar on a keyboard. We may also dock the content browser in a layout. In the content browser, navigate to C++ Classes and to the folder with our project name. On the right side of the content browser, right-click on any free space and select New C++ Class. This will bring up a dialog to specify the new class. Let's select All Classes and select Object, which is the most basic Unreal Engine class we can create. Let's click on Next. I will name it Suricune Object 1 and hit Create Class. Unreal now starts and adds new files to our project and recompiles it. Once this is done, if we go to Visual Studio, it will ask us to reload the Visual Studio project. Let's confirm with Reload All. In the project structure inside the Solution Explorer, we can see the newly created files. A .h file and a .cpp file. It's a very simple class with nearly nothing in it. In the Unreal Editor, we can also see the newly created class in the Content Browser. 
We can easily navigate between the Unreal Editor and Visual Studio by double-clicking on a class in the Content Browser. Run and play test our game is very easy. Just click on the little play icon and the game will start inside the Unreal Editor. Using the menu beside the play button, we can also choose among other options to run the game. For example, play in new editor window. I will use the selected viewport option. While implementing new features and functionalities into the game, we want to continuously play test the game to find issues and to find out if it behaves exactly as expected. Debugging is also a great way to explore how things work or how different parts of the engine interact with our program. Debugging is mainly done by setting a breakpoint on a specific line of code, which will interrupt the execution of the game as soon as the program runs across it. When the breakpoint got activated, the debugger provides us additional information about the program, such as values of the variables. Let's find the Surikun character class in the content browser and double click on it. Inside the Surikun character CPP file, find the begin play method. The begin play method gets called very soon after we hit play in the Unreal Editor. I guess this is a good method to show you how to set breakpoints. Let's set the breakpoint directly on the line super begin play. We can set the breakpoint by clicking on the left side of the line number. In the Unreal Editor, click on Play. And as you can see, nothing happens. That's because Visual Studio, better its debugger, is not attached to the process of the Unreal Editor. To solve that, we have to run the Unreal Editor in a different way where the debugger is attached to the running process. Or in other words, Visual Studio needs to know which application we want to debug. Currently, Unreal Editor and Visual Studio are just running side by side. As I promised in the beginning, I will show you two approaches on how to attach the debugger. Approach number one. For this approach, we start the Unreal Editor from Visual Studio and let the debugger attach automatically to it. Let's close the Unreal Editor first. In Visual Studio on the top, we can see a play icon. On the left beside of it, we can see a drop-down menu with different options. Let's select Debug Game Editor. Debug game is a so-called build configuration state, and editor is a so-called build target. If you want to read more about the different combinations, you can follow the link in the description. With the selected configuration, hit the play icon, or we can also press F5 on a keyboard. This will compile the code and start the project in Unreal Editor. We can recognize that the Unreal Editor was started in its debug version at the top right corner of our project, which shows us the name of the project with the suffix debug game. Let's make sure that the breakpoint is still set and hit play in the Unreal Editor. Directly after we hit play, Visual Studio will stop at the breakpoint. We can see that the breakpoint now has an arrow overlay. This arrow represents the position of the program and tells us where we are. We can move the arrow forward step by step or instruction by instruction using the step over button or every time we press F10 on the keyboard. If we want to resume the program and let it run freely, we can again click on the play icon or we can press F5 on a keyboard. There's a downside of running Unreal Editor this way. If we stop debugging in Visual Studio by clicking on the red square or by pressing Shift F5 on a keyboard, also the Unreal Editor will close. This can be a bit annoying when adding new classes to the project. I will show you why. If we add another C++ class, the editor will add and compile the code and Visual Studio will ask us to reload the project. If we click on Reload All, Visual Studio will ask us to stop debugging. And if we do, the Unreal Editor gets closed. So if we want to have a debug session and want to reload the project without restarting the Unreal Engine Editor, we can do the following. Approach number 2. 
By using this approach we will start Unreal Editor and Visual Studio again side by side and attach the debugger manually. In order to get this working we need to start a debug version of the Unreal Editor. We can't use the shortcut we created at the beginning, because that would start the editor in its development configuration. We can find the debug version of the Unreal Editor by following the shortcut we have created at the beginning. Right click on the shortcut and open the properties page. Choose Open File Location. Once the location is open, you want to close the properties window again. Having it open prevented me from creating additional shortcuts. Find the file Unreal Editor Win64 debuggame.exe. Click and drag it to the desktop while holding down the Alt key to create a shortcut. Now we can open the Unreal Editor in its debug version. Open the project as usual. To attach the debugger to the Unreal Editor, go to Visual Studio and select Debug and Attach to Process. Or simply press Ctrl Alt P on a keyboard. Select the Unreal Editor from the list that shows up. You can identify the correct process by looking for the title in the column Title. Select it and click on Attach. The debugger now attaches to the Unreal Editor. Anyway, if we look at the breakpoint we set earlier, Visual Studio tells us that the breakpoint will not currently be hit, because no symbols have been loaded for this document. Basically, that's because the debug symbols haven't been loaded. I wasn't successful to load the right symbols inside Visual Studio. If you know how to load the correct symbols automatically while attaching the debugger to the process, please let me know in the comments. Until then, fortunately, there is a workaround. Go to the Unreal Editor and click on the Compile button. Clicking on it will compile and then hot reload the modules. And exactly this seems to load the debug symbols for us. The breakpoint is now active and the warning is gone. In the Unreal Editor, hit play and check if the breakpoint gets activated. The next time we add a new class and Visual Studio asks us to stop debugging, the Unreal Editor will stay open. To restart the debugging session, click on Reattach to Process. And inside the Unreal Editor, click on Compile to use the workaround for the debugging symbols. Which one of the options you actually want to use does not really matter and depends only on the approach that fits best to you. And that's it. We have created a new project, added a new class and have learned two different ways to start a debug session for our project. If you have learned something or want to see more tutorials about game development, like, subscribe, share and ring the bell. Any bit helps. Thanks for watching.